Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Crazy One with your girl TQ. Hey, everybody. And we are back for another week of Theater Hoppers, the show that helps you end the date night debate. And um, we have uh, quite a bit to talk about tonight because there are some things happening in the entertainment world. But, you know, we only have one movie uh, headline, but the rest of it, we're going to stay home uh, for tonight and uh we're gonna talk about what's going on with this whole netflix deal well considering the fact that most of the movies that we were expecting mm. are bombing i think i'd rather stay home anyway <laughs> who was expecting <laughs> i mean i granted, wasn't i wanted to see phoenix i wanted to see i mean i told you the movie was gonna be bad mission and there's all, no mission impossible i mean i'm sorry not mission impossible men in black uh-huh i told you that was gonna bomb uh Godzilla. I told you that was gonna bomb. Everything's bombing, so we might as well stay home and watch Netflix. I mean, <laughs> we might as well stay home. Listen, that, that's what I'm, that's all I'm saying. It, it's not to say that movies are bad and it's the reason why they're bombing, but it could be a little bit of oversaturation with um, the blockbusters. I mean, we have basically every week there's a different blockbuster going on um, that you know. There's yeah, one week you had Avengers, the next week you had uh, Aladdin, you know, then you had Godzilla, then you have Men in Black. But that's what you got, you're supposed to be able to go to the movies like every week and enjoy it. Movies are twenty dollars a person oh, plus yeah. snacks and I, I, all that, that other get. stuff. <laughs> that all I right, totally so get. then you fall into uh, then you fall into the mode of. I don't want to spend my money on something that I can see at home. And then you fall into that trap. So now you're talking about uh, now you're talking about not spending as much money or not or picking and choosing your movies. So I want to see Endgame, but then the next movie I want to see is Spider-Man. So I can catch Aladdin. I can catch Lion King on Blu-ray or on digital or the other way that I don't want to I promote on that, this stream. <laughs> well, con considering the fact that Netflix have started to put out a great, a better quality of music, of, right. uh, movies, it works. Uh, that's not necessarily true because Netflix hasn't really been putting out better quality of movies. They've been putting out quantity of movies. They've been allowing... But the movies have been good. Not all of them. That I mean they've been allowing the the filmmakers to make their vision without any studio interference, which sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad right. thing. I mean, there's movies like um, See You Tomorrow that is a good Netflix pick, um, but it's not necessarily for your kids. So don't just, don't get fooled just because there's kids in it. It's not for kids, um, but it's a real thing about it's a real story about acceptance and you know how to let things go. Um, and then there's Movies like uh, Always Be My Maybe, which is a good romantic comedy. Uh, but then you have movies like When They See Us, which kind of people are not really like... I'm not ready to see it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm really not ready to see it. And I've, I've, a lot of people in my timeline have said um, there's, they either saw it and like cried through it or they're just not really ready to see it. Well, it, that's the thing. That's a movie that you have to be ready to see. But then you have like the series like Black Mirror that that comes out. So there are there is a, a good amount of quality content, but there's also some bombs in there, like some really horrendous stuff. I myself lean towards the anime stuff, so they're they're putting a lot more anime on there, which I like. Uh, but we got to talk about some of these movie deals that uh, is going on in the Netflix wow. world because a lot of people from the Hollywood scene, they are going over to Netflix because Netflix advantage. is allowing them yeah. to, to uh, Netflix is allowing filmmakers to make the movies that they want to make. They want to tell the stories that they want to tell without and saying. And how they want to tell it. Right. Uh, we've had a debate or we had this, the conversation a couple weeks ago about how Warner Brothers keeps dipping their hand and stuff. And now they got their hands on J.J. Abrams. They're trying to launch, launch a streaming service of their own. Right. They're trying to compete with Disney and with Netflix and Hulu, which they really should not do. Um, they really should just kind of just let the people who are doing what they do do it. Um, and, you know, kind of just leave everybody else alone 
that if they're doing an, a, a, a series, if they're doing a streaming service, let them do a streaming service because then what's going to happen is people are going to start picking and choosing what streaming service they want to buy. What Be makes more? What makes more sense for the money that I'm spending? Right, and you know Warner Brothers should kind of take control of the cable market. Because people still have to get cable for their internet unless yes. they go to some other solution. But what's happening is, what you're finding right now is, if I'm paying $6 a month for Disney, if I'm paying $16.99, which we're almost at $20 a month for Netflix now. Right. So if I'm paying that, sneaking it up. <laughs> right. And then for the, you know, for the geek populace, if I keep, you know, if I want to get into, um, they have Crunchyroll still. They have Crunchyroll for for anime people. Um, if that they want to get into the DC universe, uh, that's that's another ten dollars a month. Um, if they want CBS All Access, that's another ten dollars a month just to watch Star Trek. Yeah. Um, you know, so they have all these things that's coming up, and when you add those things up, you probably can just pay your you know pay your cable, cable bill. bill. Right. And you know the whole unplug thing is just not a thing anymore because. The more services are coming out, the more um, people trying to make their services, ex uh, their their content exclusive to their services, then the more people are going to be compelled to buy the streaming services. But if you're like you and I, we don't have a big budget where we can just buy everything. Right. So we got to pick and choose. Disney Plus is going to have a lot of Marvel and Star Wars content. That's going on our list. Yes, it is. You know what I'm saying? That's what we watch. We might just cancel HBO right, to, to, get, that, right. to get to this week. Because um, there's no thing. more Game of Thrones, so we don't need, right. we need it anymore. I can catch ballers on the replay, yeah. and, and, you know, Disney bought Hulu, too. So guess right. what? That stuff is going to be going over to Hulu. Yeah. And, you know. We can wait the 24 hours and keep it moving. Exactly. So you have to think about that when, you know, uh, when you're talking about the whole streaming service ordeal. But let's talk about the deals that the streaming service has been making. So, um, go ahead, you can take off the first... Um... Well, the first one is uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, Netflix has picked up his adaptation of Tick, Tick, Boom um, with Andrew Garfield run as the star. And if you don't know about Tick, Tick, Boom, Tick, Tick, Boom is, was written by the person who wrote Rent. Right. Um, and it's an auto, it's a semi autobiographical stage musical about an aspiring composer trying to realize his dreams in New York City around the 1990s. Um, the one thing that's different about this is it is a musical, so Netflix is actually going to take a step into this genre of movies. Well, it's not. I don't think they I don't think they're putting their faith into the genre of movies more than they're putting their faith into the person that's making this genre. Well, yeah, because Lin-Manuel is, is yeah. the man. He so is the man. he's the man in this in You this think arena. about Hamilton, you think about Moana, you think about Coco. Oh, yeah. You think, yeah. You, you he know, is the man. He, Mary Poppins. Right. I mean, you, you can't name a, a musical now without him being mentioned in it. Right. So they're taking a step in that direction. Um, and I'm excited to see it. I actually want to see it. I've seen this screenplay um, before, and I'm excited to see it. So I'm game. I'm, I'm okay with it. I know it's not something that you would probably watch, nope. but I'm game. Um, it isn't a really, they don't have a release date for it yet, but I'm excited. I mean, it's still in production. It's still it's in pre-production. So um, Lin-Manuel Miranda is going to pen, and he's not going to direct. He's going to pen. No, he's not um, But if you are interested in seeing what... No, I'm sorry. He is directing it. It's being written by Stephen Leven Levinson. Oh. He's directing it. He's not writing it. Okay. I thought he was writing it, no, not directing he's, it. He's directing it. He's not writing it. Okay. So, I mean, but that's, you know, that's on one front. If you are interested in seeing what Tick, Tick, Boom is, there are lots of clips on YouTube um, for the Broadway play. The play, yeah. Um, and I believe, it has it won a Tony or? No, no it, it didn't make a big uh, impact right. um, on Broadway. Everybody knew about it because of its author, um, uh, Jonathan Larson. So they knew it and they watched it because of Rent. Right. But it didn't make a big, as big as a, a noise as much noise as rent did so that's why uh 
it 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 was there you know it didn't again it didn't make get didn't get any tonys but it is what it is and I, again i'm still excited to see it because i am a avid uh lin-manuel miranda fan so and i have to blame that on my 10 year old uh, <laughs> so <laughs> but i'm excited i'm excited to see it and we all know uh Andrew Garfield. Uh huh. So to see him in this role, and he just came. He actually just came off a of Broadway. Yeah, Andrew. Not too long well, ago. yeah, he won a bro. He won a Tony. Yes. Um, but I mean, Andrew Garfield isn't really selling me or anything. I've got you know two, three words for you, the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I think he's probably my least favorite Peter Parker. Really? Yeah. I like him as Peter Parker. I think he's my least favorite Peter Parker. I like him as Peter Parker. Uh, no. I really like him as Peter no, Parker. No, nope. He wasn't, he, he, he looked, Andrew Garfield looked like a 30-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> trying okay. to be, trying to be the teenager. So, so, so here's, and here's Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield was that dude that graduated high school like five years ago. And the still try to go state. to the high school and look cool. Still drive up and sit outside his car. Yeah. He, he's, you know, buying, you. buying the kids beer because, you know, he's old enough to. And yeah, that, that, that was Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. No, sir. Uh, so <laughs> um, sticking with the Netflix deal, we have um, another one that is uh, I'm not too excited about this one either. Really? I am. I am because of the story, the the, the line, not because I, of the I people. Understand, I, understand the, I understand the story. I, I'm, I'll say it like this. I love the story. Right. I love the people doing the story. But yeah, you, this is I, have my reser yeah. I have my reservations on how the story is played out. So we're talking about Ma Rainey's Black Bottom yes. uh, is getting made into a uh, movie. This is another from stage to screen adaptation and it reunites Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. Denzel Washington will not be in this movie, however, he is going to be the lead producer on the movie, helping bring the movie to life. Um, and it's gonna have Viola Davis starring and it's going to have Chadwick Boseman, um, who they brought in to, we don't know what role he's gonna be playing, uh, but it is going to be centered around a studio session mm -hmm. in New York City, or, or no, in Chicago, I'm in sorry. Chicago. It's set around a, a studio session in Chicago where we're going to be dealing with the race relation between white executives and black music performers. In 1927. In 1927. <laughs> so this is a big, this is a big deal. Um, something like this should have came out around this time of year. I will say this, around like Juneteenth. Um, yeah. If not going for a February release. Um, but the reason why I am not looking forward to this is because Denzel also was responsible for bringing fences to uh, yeah, you to weren't screen. Too crazy about and, fences you know, granted, I'm a YSD person, Yale right. School of Drama represent, and August Wilson is the author of this right. uh, yes, story. Um, but. I did not like the screen adaptation of Fences because it felt like I was watching a stage play. Now, f as a person who is, you know, around stage plays five days a week, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see a stage play when I go to the movies. I don't want to see a stage play when I'm sitting down watching a screen. I want to see a stage play when I go to the theater to see a stage play. I felt like the uh, Fences was that, and I have a feeling that this adaptation is going to be the same thing, a, uh, a stage play brought to screen, acted in the same way that a stage play is acted. Well, I get it. Um, and I understand what you're saying, but I think they're going to be able to make some adjustments. I think that's the word I want to use. Make some changes and adjustments um, because they can. I don't know if they had that liberty when they did Fences. Yeah, they and did. And I don't even know if it's even... Yeah, they did. But I think August Wilson's plays are so... You really don't want to change anything, so it's hard to make it into... You don't have to, you don't have to change anything in order to produce it differently. 
All right, look at HBO. They brought back, um, they brought back, what's the, uh, Native Son. Yes. They brought back Native Son, and they did a movie. Of course, if, you're, uh, if you know the story of Native Son, they didn't change the story of Native no, Son. No, they didn't. They updated it. They brought it back to, you know, they brought it up to today's terms and, and right. terminology and, uh, they did a great and, and job scenario. At- but I didn't feel like I was watching a stage play. You know, there are other movies that are adapted from stage plays that I went to, that I, that I saw that, okay, cool. There are some movies that I saw that I didn't know there was a stage play. So my question would be, should they keep it the way it is uh-huh. or should they modernize it? Well, they're... Because no, like they did, well, like it's, they did it's set in 19, or should they do like they did in 19, It's set in 1927, so they're going to stick with the original source material. Right. Denzel Washington, I believe, has a knack for... Uh, he has a knack for keeping August Wilson's... Uh, vision. Uh, yeah, vision alive, um, and which is why I'm worried about it, because I want to see a movie. I, I, I like the idea of the story. Mm-hmm. All right, but I want to see a movie. I don't want to see a stage play in a movie, you know. And that's my what, only reservation. You know what I'm scared about um, is that it turns into Cadillac Records. I'm not. I'm not that's, too worried about. And that's about, what. That's the first thing when I was uh, reading, and I, did, I was like, "Well, it sounds like the the, the a couple scenes in Cadillac Records." So, um, but I'm still excited to see it. I'm really excited to see it. Um, this project was actually supposed to go to HBO first. Right. And it's now, along with a couple other adaptations, is going over to Netflix. Well, HBO so. HBO got the vision because they already saw, you know, hey, if we could do Native Son, then, hey, right. let's, let's get let's, some let's more of these. It. Yeah, <laughs> let's get right. some more of these. Uh, but, I mean, and the biggest example of going from stage play to movie successfully and i'm saying successfully Mm -hmm. tyler perry um you know when i see a medea movie although i cannot stand medea movies i cannot stand them at all but they are movies they're not stage plays well most of the most of the movies are like two or three of the plays put together into the movie i don't care i'm still watching the movie (laughs) yeah when i watch i agree when i watch fences i'm sorry yeah. I sat there and I said this to you while we were watching yeah. it. I feel like I'm watching a stage play. And that's what I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, see, seeing the story, I want to see the story. I want to see it set in 1927, but I want to see it as a movie. I don't want to see it as a stage play. As, as a stage play. Well, they have yeah. a lot of, um, a lot of plays moving over um, and being developed into feature films. Uh-huh. Um, and so. That's the wave now. Yeah. But it, it <laughs> I started to say something that was that would not have been very nice. <laughs> it's, we can't have any kind of originality um, because now we're just taking, we're just adapting what's there to put it well, in the big screen. That's so, why we have Jordan Peele, so we can have originality. Originality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, but um, hopefully, with the characters that, with the actors that they have. And the support that they have, um, as far as the crew that they have uh-huh. going into this, hopefully it'll be a success that they want it to be. I'm hoping that it is a success just off the story alone. I'm hoping that it's going to be a success. I'm just not too confident, and because of in in you know, hey, you can hate me, you can love me, all you want. Because of fences, I'm right. worried about I know. it. And that's and that's my only reservation. The story, I think, the story needs to be told, especially in today's musical climate, um, especially in today's social political climate. Right. I think it's a good movie to be shown that will not um, piss everybody off, so to speak, um, but it will, you know, just raise the awareness that it needs to to raise as far as racial relations in the um, in the music industry and how you know the music is manipulated and controlled by the people who are uh, supplying the money. Right. Well, this um, play, this movie, um, ha- does not have a release date. It is set to begin filming next month in Pittsburgh. So yes. we're excited, looking forward to see where this and how it actually comes to fruition. All right. We're waiting on that. Um, the next uh, movie the next Netflix. It's not a play. It's not a play. We're not talking Thank about you. 
Um, although, although. You're talking about thank you. You don't um, want to. I like the blaze. I'm just happy that we're, because it did. Again, there's no originality when it comes to it. Like, I've, if I've seen the play, I'm like, okay, I re like you said, I want to see something different. Uh huh. And if and I'm the type of person like when they did the Wiz live, I know the Wiz by heart, so I'm like, wait a minute, this is it. Just it feels weird. So, <laughs> so when it comes to doing a adaptation, you just really, you know, how many times they've done King Lear. And all of the Shakespearean plays into movies. Oh, yeah. want something different. Um, so hopefully, again, they'll do something different with that. But the movie. I mean, at least they trailer. know how to do. At least they know how to do Shakespeare. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, we got a movie trailer and a poster um, teasing the remake of Fred Cavalli's 2010 French film Point Blank. Yay! Remakes. Yes, we went from. Redoing plays, plays to, to redoing movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, this movie um, stars the MCU's Anthony Mackie and Frank Grillo. Um, and it is set to premiere Friday, July 12th on Netflix. Yeah. And I think I'm a little bit excited to see this. Um, and I was reading... And they said that, you know, how um, hopefully with Netflix, this is an in-between. You know how I, there was a movie um, that Chadwick Boseman did on Netflix, and it sort of helped prepare people for him for Black Panther. And hopefully this is a movie in between the MCUs because we know that um, Anthony Mackie is getting ready for Falcon. Um, and, for Falcon. and so hopefully this is the in-between to keep us abreast of you know, yeah, I remember him from, yeah, I remember him. So let me speak to the people who matter real quick. Falcon and Crossbones are in a buddy cop movie together, but they're not buddy cops, they're buddy villains. All right, it's action packed. Oh my God. All right, it's got uh, fighting, and I, don't, I haven't seen the explosion yet, but it's got fighting, it's got comedy, it's got violence. Yes. Okay, that's all we need to know. This is a Friday night, and yes. uh, you know, kick back, order a pizza, you know, get yourself a couple of cans of soda, and you know, just just, enjoy. just have yeah. a fun, have a fun time. That's what this is. That's what we need. All right, just stop giving me all the. I mean, granted, we we. Life lessons are good to to have when you're watching movies, but this one is just one for can, yes. Of can course, we there just is a, have a good time at the theater. Um, what they a little or a good bit time in the living room rather. What, unless what you have a home theater. A little theater. bit worried about is uh, the original film was produced, um, and produced for ten point three million, and it did not make a profit. So when they did the remake, they're like, we're not taking this to the big screen. <laughs> we're gonna kick it over to Netflix. Right. Um, but. It was already produced for $12 million. So right. they've already started above budget from the last one. So hopefully this will do. Well, I mean, okay. So let's let's take this to uh, another area. I'm going to go to a rom-com here. Okay. Um, so the movie, uh, Always Be My Maybe, mm -hmm. all right? Good flick on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, it's basically an Asian rom-com. Mm -hmm. It's not Crazy Rich Asians, but... Um, it's a different take on the Ron comment, knows what it is. But had that movie come out 10 years ago, it would have went to the theaters. And it okay. would have made a good it would have made a good showing at the theaters. However, we have Mad Titans snapping their fingers and killing half the universe, and that's how the movie <laughs> ends. And then the next year, you know, you have half half of the world literally, you know, in line to see what happens next. And then on the other side, you have photorealistic animals that looks like it's from National Geographic coming together and singing African harmony. All right. You have those types of movies coming out in the summer. Right. You don't put this you don't put this movie up against those. Right. All right. You have like movies like Ma, which is basically an original story because Blumhouse and A24, these guys are pumping out i mean even though they're kind of like thriller slash horror psychological thriller type right. of type of movies but they're putting out original movies that people want to see and they're doing it for around this amount of money yeah. 
yeah. and then going into the theaters and making 24 yeah. 25 making their money million dollars right. right i think uh ma was made for five million dollars and it's already up to like 38 million dollars yeah. gross so they made their money back then some but when you take a movie like this anthony mackie and um and grillo they're not draws right okay unless you unless you're talking about hey Here's Anthony Mackie in a new MCU movie. Right, no. He's right. not going to be a draw. So what do you do to let allow him to show his his acting chops? Because before uh before he became Falcon, the only people people only knew him as Papa Dot. That's it. All right. So you take this movie, you put it on Netflix, you allow if the movie is any good, you allow people to see what Anthony Mackie can do without being in an MCU movie, even though it's an action movie, right. but it's still a non MCU movie. You see what he can do there. And then you can um you know, then he can probably start to become a draw by himself well, that, from well, there. That's, that's what I said. When um like I said, Netflix had created a lane for Chadwick Boseman with the movie that he did with them, um, to prepare us and to prepare the audiences for him to do Black Panther. We knew who he was. This is but we knew who. That's I not. I mean, we, no. I'm not saying. I'm not saying we didn't know who he was. It was just like, okay, we're getting ready to see him in this humongous care in this humongous uh, role, and this is just like an in between role in between uh, Avengers and Falcon. Yeah, but that's so, not a that's not a good excuse because I didn't he, say it was an excuse. He played James Brown. He played Jackie right. Robinson. Okay, but people How much, who don't like uh, biographies did not see those movies. Who the heck did not see uh, uh, Get On Up? I mean, I saw it because I mean, come on now, Who, Jackie Robinson. That was a uh, uh, that was a big movie on itself. But for MCU actors in particularly, they have the worst time getting other movies seen because when of, because yeah. you know. If Chris Evans ain't Captain America, I don't know if I want to see Chris Evans. If you've never seen Snowpiercer, shame on you. Go see Snowpiercer. Yeah. It's a really good yeah. movie. It's on starring, Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's yeah. on Netflix. Starring Chris Evans, and I believe he either wrote or directed that movie. Um, he had okay. something. He had something to do behind the scenes with getting that movie made. And he's one of those people who have. He'll do the. He'll do the Hollywood handshake. All right. Mm -hmm. So the Hollywood handshake is: give me a hand. Thank you. I'll do this one for you. And now I've made enough money. I'm going to do my own project. Oh, you need me to come back to do another studio movie? I will do that. Yeah. You just make sure you support. That's called the Hollywood handshake. Right. So he does those He does those things. But then you go to Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. Will, we all know him as Tony Stark. He won an Oscar for playing Charlie Chapman. Yes, but we know him as Tony Stark. Yes, what happened when he tried to do a movie like The Judge? It flopped. That was a great movie. It flopped, but that was like an awesome movie. But people, he's not Tony Stark. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not going it. to see. I'm not I going to see it. the movie. Um, also, I don't think that movie did critically good. It, um, did, it really didn't. But it was a great movie. Um, but then you have um, Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes. All right. I'm a fan. The first one, <laughs> I'm a fan. the first one was dope. The second one was, yeah. what the heck are you uh, yeah. doing? And, and I, they're coming out with another. They're one. doing another one. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, a lot of people when they see him now, they only see Tony Stark. Yeah. So it's important for MCU actors to do these types of movies, movies. Yeah. Um, so that if they want to branch off, I mean, granted, if you have a multi-year deal in an MCU movie. You're good. I mean, you you can. And I th but I think it uh, it has a lot to do with the generation as well. Right. Um. Because the people who know who grew up watching the MCU movies, they only know him as Tony Stark. So when he goes to play another movie, like you said, they don't know, they don't know his early stuff. They don't even know Sherlock Holmes. So it's like I really don't want to see that because, like you said, it's not. So they're stuck, and I get it. But do I really? want to see him playing something else on Netflix. Well, that's the thing. Yes, you do want to see him playing something else on Netflix because that's how you become a draw. If the movie is good, if Point Break ends Point Blank ends up being good, then people say, "Well, we can get Anthony Mackie to do other stuff." Right. You know, because Anthony Mackie outside of um being Papa Doc, he was in some other basketball movie that was just utter crap and then, you know, he does he did a couple of other movies that just like he was in there. I think he did Pain and Gain. 
with The Rock and Mark Wahlberg. Um, yeah, he was in Pain and Gain. Okay. Um, he was good in that. But it was like, okay, we're, we're ready yeah. for you to put the wings back on. And, you know, so. Well, Grillo produced, helped produce this as well. He was one of the co-producers. For Grillo this, so. needs this more than anything um, because he was like a villain for like a movie and a half and then made an appearance back yeah. in Endgame. Um, so this is good for him. Uh, and when you get yourself in the producer seat, that's also a good thing because that means that you're actually building your career yeah. off of not just being in the movie, but, you know, helping Working, yeah, build a movie. Right. It helps your it really helps your career. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what we got going on on Netflix, guys. Do not uh, knock the flicks. They are there. Give give these movies a shot, even though you may have not seen them or, you know, you don't know too much about them. Give these movies a shot because uh, these are the movies that if they do well, then they'll produce more of them. Uh, a lot of times, you, if people are tired of remakes and redos and stuff like that, even though this is a remake, you know, I'm looking at this like I looked at the Italian job. I gave the Italian job. Um, uh, the, Italian uh, the Italian job, job was great. Italian We're still job. waiting for the Brazilian job, which was supposed to be, you know, the part I two. Gone in 60 Seconds, another uh a yes. movie that was a remake that ended up being like really good but it yes. ended up being a cult classic because it didn't fare well in the theaters so go to netflix watch movies like these support the movies like these and you know next thing you know when the next really good script comes in for anthony mackie or grillo to be a leading man then we'll we'll definitely make we'll sure be on board with it instead of being like oh okay well i'm just seeing falcon and crossbones because right. that's even how I labeled it, Falcon and Crossbones <laughs> in a movie. So, um, Marsha uh, Gay Harden is also in, uh, also in this movie, playing her iconic uh, cop uh -huh. because that's what she always plays. She doesn't play anything else. I don't even, Yeah, she always plays a cop the same, and I think she's a bad cop in this, but she plays the same role in everything for like right. the past five years. That's the only thing she's ever played. <laughs> I'm excited to see <laughs> to see the mm. movie. Um, I want to see it to check it out to see how it, what it is and how yeah, it does. I'm, the, trailer, I'm gonna... the trailer is out. Um, go check out the trailer. Put it on your watch list. All right. It's on mine. And uh, we're going to move over to our next story. So our next story, um, which is kind of, yeah, it's it's cliche at this point, you know. So you look right here. This is our, uh, no, right here. There we go. This is our final story of the day. I am so not feeling this. Okay, so <laughs> here, here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. Marvel has decided to re-release Avengers Endgame with new footage. So there should be about six to eight minutes, three maybe, three hours of... Um, well, it was an awesome movie. It's a lot of people's movie worth of it, the year. But to do it again? I'd do it again. For eight minutes? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yeah. See that. You know what? Get off my set. <laughs> no, I'm get off, not doing it. Get off it. my set, cause I am not doing it. Call me when the extra stuff come in, and then I watch. No, it. that's not how it works. I'm not. That's not how that. it works. I love the movie, but I, I'm not doing it. Okay, that again. so here's the deal. Avengers Endgame is 45 million dollars shy of breaking the Avatar record. So there's a twofold reason of they're doing this. One, the events of Spider-Man: Far From Home are directly after what's going on with Avengers Endgame. So there's a whole fallout from there that the story is, and the um, the, the early reviews for Spider-Man Far From Home came back, and I don't think there's been a negative review. So what they want to do, uh, if you pay attention to the box office, go to c1network.com to check out um, our box office reports. What happened when Endgame came out all right, what happened when Infinity War came out mm -hmm. was Black Panther got a surge, got an extra surge in box office right. sales because people wanted to go see Black Panther and then go see Avengers Infinity War because those were the two subsequent movies to come out. Right. When an Endgame came out, Captain Marvel went from number eight to number two in the box office right. because people went to go see Captain Marvel and then they say, okay, let's go, let's go see, uh, let's go see Endgame. Now, so that's how that worked, people, because people wanted to see the subsequent movie right. um, together. 
So what I was thinking, what I was theorizing um, before they even announced this was that Avengers Endgame was going to get a late surge right before Spider-Man Spider Far From Home right. came out because people want to go watch Endgame and then go see Spider-Man and say, okay, then so, so their memory can be fresh going into when Spider-Man comes in. And Spider-Man, from what I'm hearing, has some, like, OMG surprises that people... Uh, so one report said, avoid spoilers from Spider-Man Far From Home at all costs. Okay. Basically treat it like you treat it in-game. Don't see nothing, don't want to hear nothing, don't, don't tell me. Don't watch any more TV spots, don't watch any more trailers. It, the, the stuff that don't you've watch already food commercials yeah no don't taco bell no nothing yeah stay <laughs> stay stay away from this at all costs Burger and King, make sure that you are you know because this is what's going to happen they're going to break this record they're going to break this record. i don't care if people like you saying oh heck no i'm not going guess what all the nerds and all the fanboys I, I, they, they will flock will. to see this extra footage because these are all the people that are going to go home immediately after, jump on YouTube and start taking screenshots and putting little circles on there and saying, here's what you missed. Here's how this tied up to this. Here's the extra footage explained. All that good stuff. That's what happens. You're looking at me like that, but guess what? They probably don't work because they're making money doing that. I, I, I get it. Uh -huh. I get it. But I, I don't think I want to. Nah. I, I, it was worth it the first time. It was worth it the second time. I only went once. Yeah, I, I, I went. He went more than once. And then I went and took my girls, and I'd go see it again. Because it was, for me right now, it was the best movie of the year. I, that's it was a great movie. I, I, it was a great movie. Um, Eric said, Eric in the chat room said, I thought they were going to beat Avatar within the first few weeks. <laughs> they should have aimed for, they should have aimed for the head. Unfortunately, the reason why Avatar has that um, record is because Avatar has legs. The reason why Avatar has legs is because Avatar released in 19, I mean, in 2009, where they weren't stacking blockbuster after blockbuster right. after blockbuster, right. and therefore it was like a phenomenon. Now, granted, the premise of the story of Avatar is not original at all. It's basically uh, John Smith, Pocahontas, uh, Fern Gully. Uh, you know, you take all those movies. you take with those blue two people. you take those two movies and you mash them together. You get Avatar with blue people. Um, but it was something that people have never seen before. All right, it was a 3D IMAX experience. I'm telling you, if you've never saw, if you've never seen Avatar. In the IMAX theater, when the great tree came falling down, oh my God, that was just something that was worth the price of admission right there, just to see that scene on the IMAX. But my point, going back, it had legs. People from across the world were saying, "You have to see this Avatar thing. It's groundbreaking. We've never seen anything like it." Oh my God, this was so good. The floating islands, and they even had to make a theme park out of it um, because. And, and now watch this, watch this. I'm wondering if Avatar is going to take back the throne because once the uh, once Avatar 2 is ready, how much you want to bet they're going to re-release Avatar? Yeah, yep, definitely. That would be the way, that would be the smart thing to do, though. Right. I mean, it, it is what it is. That would be definitely the smart thing to do, um, to re-release uh, Avatar, the first one when Avatar 2 comes out. Right, and watch they do some crazy remastering and do it in oh, yeah. IMAX and everything like that. We're going to have blue french fries. We're going to have blue Slurpees. We're going to have blue everything. No, they didn't do that. They're not going to do that. They're going to have blue everything. They're not going to do that yeah, because... They no, they're going to... Because this is the next generation of, of, of people who are seeing Avatar, and so they need to be uh, engulfed with blueness. And so they're going to okay, have... Okay, stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> So, when they release <laughs> Avengers Endgame again with the new footage, now, again, we're unclear with, um, we're speculating anywhere between six and eight minutes of new footage. Right. Uh, it may be some of the stuff that, that was cut out. We know that there was a scene that they shot 
um, there was a scene that they shot with, with Tony Stark and his uh, and Morgan as a teenager when he snapped his fingers. Mm -hmm. They may throw that in there. Um, they may throw some other stuff. Um, I think they did a, a, a shot of what happens when Hulk snapped his fingers and, every, and brought everybody back. I, I think there's maybe a, some shot like that. We don't know right. what kind of uh, shots that they took out and what scenes that they um, took out. And because when you look at all the interviews that the Russo brothers did, they said, well, the movie is pretty much, like you're pretty much watching the director's cut. So, so they what, may, did they, what did they take out then? That's, that's the question. That, and that's the question. So, you know, there's no, you know, don't quote me on the six to eight minutes. That that's what speculation is. All we know is that this is happening next week, the week before Spider-Man Homecoming comes out. And um, that's should, that should be enough to put it out, put it over the top. Because I don't believe anything is coming out that week. Um, anything of importance is coming mm -hmm. out that week. And... So. You know, it's bad enough that we are in the, the midsummer slump of movies because the box office has been the lowest that it's ever been. Um, the movies have not been. Well, uh, again, great. So, so you have uh, Toy Story come. You have Toy Story and Child's Play, which are going to be the top two getters. Yeah. But I guarantee you Toy Story is going to come up at number one. Yes. Child's Play is going to come up at number two. Um, but then next week, unless you have repeat viewings of Child's Play and Toy Story, Avengers might take the number one spot again, right, and if they there's do, there's nothing coming out um, the week that last week. Yeah, nothing's coming right. out. Well, we have um, Annabelle yesterday, and Ophelia is coming out, and those three are. You haven't seen any promotion, yeah. barely any promotion on all of those. Um, so that's it. Let us know in the comments, guys. Will you be going to see of uh, the end game, uh, Avengers end game with for the a new scene for third time, for a second, third, fourth, fifth time? Um, you know, are you, do you care enough to try to help push it over the edge of Avatar? That's yeah. really the question or not. Because personally speaking, I think I would just wait on the, uh, I would just wait on the Blu-ray. But I the do, extra stuff. but yeah. I do have a free movie ticket to, uh, to burn up, so. No, we're going to see Spider-Man. Okay, so I guess we're going to see Spider-Man. So, guys, thank you. This is our <laughs> show. And uh, we will be back next week uh, for another edition of Theater Hoppers. Guys, real quick, please check out C1Network.com. We are revamping the site um, to display more of the shows that we have on the C1 Network. So we're going to have movie reports from Theater Hoppers. We're going to have a sports reports from the starting five. And... Um, from the remnant of C1 Radio, we're going to have, you know, the news of uh, music and the going-ons of music. Right. And, you know, as always, make sure you're liking the page. Make sure you're liking the video if you're watching on YouTube. And make sure you're smashing and subscribing, uh, smashing the likes, subscribing. Put on your notifications so that you know the next time that we go live. We go live every Thursday right here on this channel. Yes. So we will see you guys next time. Remember... We have the theaters, so, so you, you don't, don't have, have to. to.